with Dan Bonner, Wes Durham. We welcome you to KFC Yum Center. Those of you that just watched the ACC men's soccer final, Bellarmine and Louisville for a 13th time and the ball in the air at the Yum Center. And the Knights with Garrett Tipton and Kurt Hoff. And that's Justin Betts, their outstanding player. And Louisville in the man-to-man. -man. Suter, 10 to shoot. Betts, hopes three. Spins out the rebound for Jalen Withers. And Louisville really like to push the ball against this Bellarmine team. L. Ellis leads the charge to the Cardinals with Mike James, Brandon Huntley Hatfields at Tennessee transfer, Sidney Curry, and Jalen Withers, key contributors a year ago. Huntley Hatfield. West, that's a pretty good formula. Get the defense to collapse and hit a three. 6'10 sophomore transfer from Tennessee puts the cards in front here. Now in the man-to-man -man defense, what Louisville's trying to do is deny some of these passing lanes. The ball rarely hits the floor here with a dribble. These guys pass the ball, pass the ball, and then they get a shot. Betts, a terrific shooter, grad student from New Albany, Indiana, ties the game. Betts actually more noted for his defensive prowess than his ability to yep. shoot the ball. Curry's first touch. Working inside against Hope, turns it over, and we get a whistle and a foul. Terrific crew tonight, Burt Smith, Tony Henderson, Tommy Morrissey on the whistle. And that's a place where Louisville has a big advantage. They can go inside. And how how just got a little impatient in there. They were coming to double-team Curry, and he pushed Curry. Yep. Ellis will put it in play. That's Withers. Fell away. A little look at Huntley Hatfield will go back to it and stripped of it by Betts over the inline out of bounds. It will stay with the cards. That's really a nice job by Huntley Hatfield. He's six feet ten. Betts is only six three, but he jumped straight up in the air. Most of the time, big guys get called for over the back in that kind of a situation. Quickly they move it to Ellis. He'll fire for three. Rattled out, tipped in the rebound. Garrett Tipton all the way to the basket. And Huntley Hatfield the rebound for Louisville. Dan, I'm interested to watch the, the temperament of this ball game, especially in the first, I don't know, four to ten minutes here tonight for Kenny Payne. There's Withers out of the corner. Pair of threes for the cards. Now, right at the moment, Wes, we're seeing what Louisville would like to do. Get the ball inside, get it into the lane area, force the defense to collapse, get an open shot, and hit it. Yep. You know, if you can make those shots, that's a pretty good formula. <laughs> Suter, quick look. Hope making the move. Working on Curry with the right hand, and I think Bert Smith's got Sidney Curry for a foul. That'll be number one on the senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and the first on the card. Wes, and, and we need to tell everybody here, this is the opening game, but the officials are really looking for that bumping on the inside. They're trying to reduce the physicality of the game in there, and we've seen two of those calls here early in this game. Yep. Bash Whelan, we're in 22 for the Knights. Catch and score. Nicely done. Nice pass from Suter. They move without the ball. They move the ball very effectively. This is a tough team to guard. Whelan only played about eight minutes a game last year. All the way to averaging two points and a rebound a contest for Davenport's club. James for Ellis. And the three good for L. Ellis. He was one of eight from three in the two exhibition games. Did a lot of stuff at the free throw line. He was 13 of 15 at the free throw line. Well, Bellerman can't guard everything, and if they're going to force Louisville into threes, that's exactly what they want to do. James slapped it off the window. Withers in transition with the left hand and a foul on the Knights. That'll be number two on Davenport's club. And already some substitutions off the Bellarmine bench. 
The foul is on Hope, by the way. That's his second. It is. Yep. So they've got two fouls, but both of them are on their starting center. And so here is Withers at the line, who was 92% in the two exhibition games. He's got four. Cards a year ago were 67% from the free throw line as a team. And you see substitutions. That's Kurt Hope going off the floor, the sophomore from Montgomery, Indiana. And we get the 6'10 sophomore transfer, Langdon Hatton, has come on the floor. And they're going to get a foul called on Huntley Hatfield after the free throw by Withers for a little shove underneath. And the officials very conscious of the activity on the inside here early in the game. And Wes, you were talking about Louisville shooting 67% from the free throw line last year. They really struggled to shoot and score. Right. They were 13th, 12th in the ACC in scoring, 13th in field goal percentage, and they've shot the ball. It has to be encouraging the way they've started the game shooting the ball tonight. Cards have also brought Kamari Lands on the floor. He's a freshman from Indianapolis. Here is the steal and dunk by Withers. Seven early for Jalen Withers of Louisville's 13. Eight-point advantage for the Cards. Really nice job by Withers to jump out in the passing lane. You cannot allow Bellerman to just move the ball from side to side without any opposition. And Huntley Hatfield will draw his second, so both bigs for the respective schools have a pair of fouls here in the first nearly four minutes of play. Louisville thought they were going to get the under uh, well, under 16 timeout and they're a second away. Well, they got to be under, so yeah. they're not. <laughs> so after the Huntley-Hatfield foul. I think this is a big possession for Bellarmine. You can feel the game starting to slip away a little bit, even though we're early. J.J. Trainer checking in. There's the drive and score. And that's Alex Freem checking in, Dan, the senior from Cincinnati who injured most of last year, who's been rehabbing all preseason, trying to play tonight. Don't know how many minutes we'll see out of uh, Freem, but uh, got a layup there. Every minute they can get from him is a positive. Withers draws the foul, and that'll be Tipton going to break. First on Tipton, third on the nice, but Jalen Withers off to a hot start tonight at the Young Center. The dunk in transition, Louisville by six. Emphasizes passing and ball movement on offense. There's a YouTube video out there called video out there called The Team That Doesn't Dribble. And it's about Bellerman and how they emphasize the pass over the dribble. And defensively, Louisville has to do something to make them dribble. Yeah, and we had an interesting experience this afternoon to watch Kenny Payne shoot around, which Dan focused on passing as much as it did anything else to do. Well, passing and doing things the correct way. Yep. How many times did we see him say, no, start over? Right. Fascinating work that Payne has brought. That professional resume, of course, speaks to that. With uh, There's a three ball off the wing and a rim out shot by Peter Suter. And front court Ellis wastes no time. Back rim miss, they crash the glass. You see Roosevelt Wheeler, the 6'11 sophomore from Richmond, has come onto the floor for the cards, wearing number four to play with Withers, and also J.J. Trainer And Tipton was able to knock down a three. He hit 32% a year ago, and Garrett Tipton all of a sudden cuts it to a three-point Louisville advantage. You gotta be careful. Bellman will push the ball up and take that early three. You can't lose their guys in transition. Substitutions waiting at the table for the Knights. And here is Lance. Ooh, pressure extended by Bellerman there, Dan. Well, they got there, they got tipped the ball and they started after. Line drive by Trainer, no good. Wheeler the rebound. Burn the dribble, had it stripped out of there. Last touch by the cards. And here comes Ben Johnson, the former Mr. Basketball in Kentucky from Lexington Catholic, wearing 33 for the Knights. There's a look at Johnson, a red shirt freshman, checking into the lineup. Red shirted last year because he's in a five year NBA program. Yeah. <laughs> and he needed that fifth year. Langdon Hatton on the floor. And here is Whelan trying to score against Trainer inside. 
Couple of pivot moves, got caught, put it up, and a foul on J.J. Trainer. Trainer will commit his first. It's four on Louisville as a team. And that, that's a break for Bellerman because yep. Wheeland was, he was trapped down there. Knights were pretty salty in the A-Sun in free throws, 75% as a team a year ago. Wheeland was 62%. Well, now, West, they list his name as Bash Wheeland. Yeah. But it's not Bash. His real name is Sebastian, but he hates that. And so you're supposed to call him Bash. As I am. Yes, as yeah. we both are. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Well, we aim to please, if nothing else. Absolutely. Here, we, don't, okay. we don't want to upset people. No, no. Particularly people who have cool nicknames like Batch. Yeah. Two-point game. Wheeling got one of the two free throws. Interested to watch Kamari Lands, Dan. That's a young man committed to the program when Chris Mack was still here and stuck with the commitment. Here is Trainer inside right hand. Then a first basket for J.J. Trainer. That's really nice ball movement by Louisville. We're talking about Bellerman's ball movement, but the cards that time, they moved the ball very effectively, and that's what Kenny Payne wants him to do. Four-point lead for LaVille. Bats quickly. Wheeling again on the drive. Kick out Johnson. Ben Johnson knocks down the three. Boy, he shoots that. What a nice stroke he's got. That ball looks like it's supposed to go in the basket. Knights to within one on Johnson's first collegiate basket. Ellis' spot up. Rattled out. Suter the rebound. Chris ball movement. Back to Whelan. Out the, front, here's Pats. The floor is really spread out. Mm -hmm. Pats couldn't find an entry pass. Hatton at 15 feet. Bellerman in front on Langdon Hatton's foul line jump shot, Dan. And on defense, Louisville's got to get down, and they've got to play for 30 seconds because Bellerman is very comfortable playing at the end of the shot clock. Yep. Wheeler, and we get a foul call. That's going to be on Suter. His first, fourth on the Knights. Bellerman in front for the first time tonight. Garrett Tipton a moment ago caught the cards in transition on defense. Everybody ready to ride from Central New York. I suspect the fellas may try and get some dinosaur barbecue too, by the way. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? You'd be disappointed if they didn't. Yes. Yeah. They'd be disappointed if they didn't. That's, that is true as well. L. Ellis. Cards trail by one. That is Zan Payne wearing 23 for Louisville. Three-pointer out of the corner from Trainer, And the Knights the rebound. Hatton who put the Knights in front. And here's Johnson who hit a long three. Wheeling to the basket, draws Curry and the foul. Second on Sidney Curry. So both Huntley, Hatfield, and Curry have two each, Dan, with 11.32 to play in this first half. And that's five team fouls on Kenny Payne's club. Wes, and that might be a problem, but again, they're chasing Bellerman around the court. And you can see with this ball movement, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And the first free throw from Whelan, good. He's got four. Kenny Payne at 55 years of age from Laurel, Mississippi. Looks on in his first night. Wheeling got the back end to roll in. 13-2 run by the Knights and a three-point lead. Here's Ellis. He's going to play a very important piece of this Louisville team this year. And that was actually a pretty good pass that Curry just couldn't handle. Yep. He did a nice job getting position, but you got to catch the ball in there. Hat. There's Freem. And now Hat working on Curry. Tried to slide it oh. through traffic. 
Suter to catch and score, or frame the catch and score for his second field goal, beg your pardon. How did he slide it through traffic, Wes? Yeah. Five-point lead for the Knights. Louisville's gone cold. Yep. Here's Payne. Trainer, back for Payne left open. Too strong. They've only made one of their last six shots. They also have a turnover in there. Yep. You see the two and a half minute run by the Knights of nine nothing and looking to add more here with Johnson. This is Tipton with seven to shoot on the drive with Ellis. Right hand bucket good, Garrett Tipton. He's got five. Well, that's a really nice play by Tipton. He is six feet four, weighs 200 pounds, and he just used that physical advantage against Ellis. 17-2 run and 11 straight by Bellerman to take the lead. Lands can't answer. And the Bellerman coaching staff is up telling their guys to go. Mm. Here's Tipton again. And I think Tipton realized how open he was. Ball away over Trainer. Wow. Seven for Tipton. Kenny Payne a timeout. Bellerman has raced to a nine-point lead at the Young Center. Nine and a half to go. They made their last six on the floor to take a nine-point lead, but Dan, did Louisville live on a little fool's gold early? Well, Louisville made their first three threes, Wes, and uh, you know, sometimes that can have a negative impact because, yes, Kenny Payne loves them to be able to shoot threes effectively, but he wants ball movement, he wants the ball in the lane, he wants them to attack the basket before they shoot the three, and they have sort of been settling, and the guy that's got to get them out of that is L. Elson. That's an awful lot of responsibility on that young man's shoulders, but he's the one who's got to do it. Ellis playing now with Percy Miller, who we get to see for the first time. Here's Miller, the transfer from Tennessee State. With Withers, spot up two. Too strong for Withers. Wheeler crashes the glass and gives the Ville a second chance. Again, I thought that was a settle, Wes. They have an advantage in terms of size and quickness. They have to somehow figure out a way to utilize it. Withers feeds James. Offensive foul. Oh, no, it's a basket. I beg your pardon. Burt Smith is going to call the block. Mike James gets his first basket in a foul here. This is what we're talking about, Wes. you got to get going to the basket. It'll be on DeVault. It's his first. DeVault, Five on Bellerman. DeVault tried to get over there, but you have to have your defensive position established before your opponent leaves the floor. And the vault didn't get there in time. So Mike James, the redshirt freshman from Orlando, who ruptured an Achilles 13 months ago, ahead of a campaign a season ago, gets his first collegiate point. And Louisville's dropped into his zone. Out front, three ball tipped him. Miss Badley. Out of bounds, it'll belong to the Cardinals. And Wes, and you might say, well, you can't play a zone against a team that shoots the ball really well. But the reason you play zone is not necessarily, it doesn't involve shooting. Bellerman has been moving the ball so well. When you play a zone, lots of times a team that moves the ball that well against a man-to-man -man starts to stand around a little bit. So here is Ellis. Now Miller. I've got the two point guards in the game, Wes, because they're trying to get the ball moving. Here goes Hersey Miller into traffic. He'll turn and cannot get the roll. Default the rebound, the 6'10 senior transfer from Austin P. Let's see what kind of adjustments Bellerman makes against this zone. That's here's Tipton. That's Freem. Weren't sure how many minutes we'd see from Alec Freem tonight. And DeVault, who a year ago, by the way, 66% of his field goal attempts were threes. Knocks one down. Here's Freem adding to it. Well, Louisville just not paying attention. Betts steals the ball on the inbounds pass. It's 
a 12-point lead for the Knights. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good defensive sequence by the Louisville zone. That was a deep, deep three. Now, I think you can live with that. You can't live with that turnover on the inbounds pass. The lead 12 for the Knights and turned over by Ellis. And a whistle and a foul. Offensive foul. Offensive Ellis. foul, and that'll take us to a timeout. Bellerman by a dozen. Twelve to play in this first half, and it's a 19 to three run for Davenport's Knights. Well, what they have done, Wes, is they have moved the ball very effectively. They forced a couple of turnovers, and they've made shots. Yeah. Louisville started out the game. You said it before, four of six and they've gone completely cold. And one of the reasons is their ball movement isn't nearly as crisp right now as it was early in the game. Too much dribbling by the cards at the moment. Yep, two of 10 since that start for Kenny Payne's club. And I don't think Kenny Payne, I don't think what he has envisioned for the cards is the, the kind of ball movement and the court spreading that Bellerman does, but something close to it. That's now they're back to a man to man. Frame, Whelan, Devault and Tipton on the floor for the Knights of Bellarmine. And Devault, he's six feet ten, but he's a three-point shooter. There's a bump and a foul, and it's going to be on Jalen Withers. That's his first seven now on Louisville with 6.51 to go in this first half. And if you're Louisville, you cannot get impatient, either yep. on offense or defense. You know, move your feet, stay in front. Bellerman, they're not going to, they don't really want to go all the way to the basket and challenge Louisville inside. They want the defense to collapse and kick it out. Front end of the one and one. Whelan now with six in this first half. Tipton seven. Frame, by the way, who... Scott Davenport said, well, we'll see how many minutes he can go in and around media timeouts has seven as well. And is on the floor here with 6.51 to go in this first half. And Whelan got them both. Well, you know, okay, the coach is planning on being careful with you, but you come in and you score seven points. Coach's desire to be careful has gone by the board. <laughs> and you forced that. Yep. Withers. Here's James, who had the three-point trip a moment ago. See, now, he, they got a double team inside, and you've got to move the ball quickly to find the open man, and Wheeler held on to the ball. Here is Ellis, back for Withers, standing three. Back rim miss, and we'll get a whistle and a foul inside on the cards. Burt Smith, the whistle, and it's going to be on Roosevelt Wheeler. It'll be his first, and it's eight now on Louisville. So one and one at the other end. A quick chance to remind you about Sunday Best here on ACC Network. We got volleyball for you on Saturday. Syracuse and Boston College from Chestnut Hill. Coverage starts at noon right here on ES on, the, on ACC Network <laughs> and always available on the ESPN app. Langdon Hatton, who played a year ago at William and Mary at the front end of the one and one room out. So Louisville still trailing. And there's no time, and it's not time to panic for Louisville. Get the ball moving. Step back three, Ellis. Ellis. Pair of triples for L. Ellis here in the first half. Betts. Tried to skip it across the baseline, last touch. It'll stay with Bellerman on a ball intended for Whelan. And with that, here comes Peter Suter and Ben Johnson back for the Knights. That was really good defense that time by Louisville. Spot throw in for Betts. Suter working on James. There's Johnson. He traveled with it on the catch against Withers. You know, Louisville played a little sticky in the man-to-man -man that time, Dan. Uh, despite all the passing and cutting, looked like the cards were able to hold their own there. Well, I thought Withers did a nice job that time. He's guarding Johnson, who's much smaller. But he's also, Withers is very quick, just stayed in front. Johnson's a shooter. He wasn't able to get his shot off. Yep. 11-point lead. For Bellerman, the Ville with the ball in Ellis, who tripled a moment ago. He checked for L. Ellis. That's, that's not what Kenny Payne right. wants. you got to move the ball. 
Right back to Betts on the drive. Backdoor cut. Hatton too strong with the right hand. Hatton got in a hurry. Skipped into the corner for Withers. And a blocking call. It will be ticketed to Peter Suter. It'll be his second. And that is the sixth on the Knights. And Dan, as we watch this opening night unfold for Louisville, it's clear while L. Ellis is going to have the ball in his hands, they need Jalen Withers, too, because Withers is going to be a guy that can do a lot for him, it looks like. Well, he can, but let's get back to Ellis. Ellis has a really tough job. He's got to be able to score, but he's got to keep everybody else involved in the offense. Yeah. The scoring point guard job is a very difficult one. See Huntley Hatfield back on the floor playing with the two fouls as well. Here's James for three. And the back rim miss cleared away, and Betts will lead Bellman in transition. That's Freem. They really need to put defensive pressure on. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a nice job of it right here. Of course, that's the foul. Yep. And the reach on James. It'll be his first. That's nine now on the Ville. West, they were literally less than two feet from the sideline. And Johnson had his back to the court. You don't need to foul in that situation. Right. There was eight seconds left on the shot clock. Your defense had done a great job putting Bellerman in a tough spot, and they bailed him out. Free throw for Ben Johnson. And this is his first collegiate game. And, you know, but with that stroke of his, you'd expect him to be a pretty good free throw shooter. Yep. And he is. Five for Johnson. And Tipton is back in the lineup. Johnson will take a quick seat for Davenport. Remember now, Louisville's got Huntley Hatfield on the floor playing with two fouls. Sidney Curry's on the Cardinal bench with two. And here's Withers trying to get something going. Lead back to 13 for Bellman. Skip to the left side. Withers takes off baseline. Reverse it out. Here's Ellis' standing three. That's good. That's exactly the kind of ball movement that Louisville's looking for. Really nice job. A couple people passed up opportunities to get better ones. Lead to 10. Turning with the right hand is Betts. Huntley Hatfield the rebound. And the cards try and picking up a little momentum here. Ellis on the drive. The scoop. No whistle. Here's Bellerman. Can they get numbers? Frame to the trailing Hatton and a block called on Rivers. He was inside the arc. Timeout on the floor at the Yum Center. Bellerman, a 10 point lead on Louisville. Back after this. That is a full day. Take a load off. Just watch three games right there. Here is Langdon Hatton after the foul on Jalen Withers was his second. Tenth on Louisville, so two free throws for the William and Mary transfer, who a year ago averaged 15 minutes a game, four points and three rebounds, but only had one double-figure effort in the CAA. And that was a 13.14 rebound game against James Madison. Three points for Hatton. That's a nice piece to follow Hof off the bench. You're Scott Davenport. Well, and DeVault has come in yeah. and made a three. They've got some nice contributions on the interior. 11 point lead for the Knights. Here's Trainer. Foul line area for Wheeler. Back for JJ Trainer's three. Line drive, good. Five first half points for the junior from Bardstown, Kentucky. Trainer's career numbers from three are not great, but that was a good looking stroke. Yep. Feels like the under next 245 fairly important maybe to Louisville Absolutely. tonight here, Dan. Got to be patient on the defensive end. Almost turned over. James might have run off from a turnover. Here is Hatton to the basket and a layup good. Five for Langdon Hatton. 
West, they had the ball. They got the deflection. They just couldn't secure it. Yep. But that's the kind of thing that just makes you kick yourself over there on the coaching staff. Here's Withers now. Backing down. Around the perimeter it goes. James. Trainer. Offensive foul. Lowered the shoulder. Betts draws the foul on Trainer. It's his second. He becomes the fourth Cardinal with two in this first half. Well, no so free throws on player control. I'll tell you what. Betts was selected as the preseason defensive player of the year in the A Sun. And nothing I've seen so far tonight. Yep. Would cause any disagreement with that selection. He's been outstanding. Inside of two minutes to go. Frame. And that was missed on the layup by Tipton. Again, just in too big a hurry. They're worried about the size of Louisville. Get collect yourself and score. Kamari lands a three. One and done are the cards. You take that quick shot and you have very little chance for an offensive rebound. On the drive, and Whelan will get a couple of free throws. Foul is going to be on Trainer. He's the first card with three. Wes, and what has happened here as the half has gone on, the ball movement has created a problem. And as a result, when Louisville thinks they're going to pass, now Bellerman has the chance to take the ball and drive it. Yep. Eight points for Whelan, the senior from Cincinnati. And here comes Peter Suter back into the lineup to replace Alec Freem. And Bellman has a seemingly a nice little rotation yep. going here. That's nine for Whelan. He leads the Knights in scoring. Averaged two points a year ago. 12 point lead, under 90 to play in the opening frame. Trainer. Here's Ellis. James trying to attack. Here's L. Ellis, a standing three, and it's good. A but dozen it, for Ellis. Fourth three. Based on some pretty good ball movement. Nine point game. Minute to go in the first half. Stop here would be big, I think, for yep. Louisville. Tipton trying to find the cutter. Foul on fall away for Garrett Tipton gives him nine. Again, he just used his size against Ellis. Just overpowered him. The lead 11 for Bellerman. I think they're going to have to give Bet some oxygen after <laughs> Yeah. He was really slow getting up. Ten to shoot. The freshman lands. Now James on the drive. And it spun out. Wheeler the rebound and a Bellerman foul. It's going to be on Langdon Hat. That is seven now on the Knights with just 11 seconds to go in this first half and Roosevelt Wheeler to the line. He was two for two by the way in the pair of exhibition games at the foul line. Well he didn't take very many last year but he shot 75 percent mm -hmm. from the free throw line. He is a pretty good free throw shooter and this is a very important one on one I think. Yep. Too strong rebound. Taken away by Whelan. Suter on the drive. Three seconds to go. And at the horn, it rimmed off for Betts. Bellerman takes an 11 point lead down to the locker room here in the first half. Very impressive first half. They moved the ball very effectively. And Louisville, after a hot shooting start, went cold. Uphill, second 20 minutes coming for Kenny Payne's season. As the head coach of Bellerman, he's got a team that won 20 a year ago. Heck, they won a Division II title five years ago. Well, we talked about the fact that they have a great program, and by that we mean 
They, they play the way their coach wants them to play. And that's what Kenny Payne would like to get to. Yep. Sidney Curry spent most of the first half on the bench in foul trouble. And that didn't help matters for Louisville either. Here is Withers, who had seven first half points. They tried to go inside and. Offensive boy, foul. Brandon Huntley Hatfield gets his third to start the second half. Part of the reason Bellarmine had the free throw advantage was Louisville sent him to the bonus with just under seven to go in the first half, Dan. Bellarmine was attacking. They passed the ball, they moved the ball very quickly, and they were able to create some spaces where they could then drive it. And the ability to attack is what gets you to the free throw line, not standing around shooting from three. You see Huntley Hatfield quickly pulled from the floor, and J.J. Trainer has come on now for the Cards. This is Wheeland. He had nine first half points for the Knights. Tipton on the drive, tough shot over Withers, a front rim miss, and there's the Curry rebound. See, that's a really good job by Withers. Use that height advantage to force an extremely difficult shot. And Withers a three out of the corner. Nine for Jalen Withers. He's got two threes in his pocket. Bellarmine lead cut down to eight. And as long as that three is going in the basket, it's a very effective weapon. Better job on defense. Yep. Hope is back on the floor, too. Remember, he got two fouls in the first almost three and a half minutes. And he'll launch from way out and hit Kurt Hope. His first points of the ball game a year ago, he was a 30% three point shooter. Ellis with Betts, who's been outstanding tonight for the Knights, defending. There's James on the block for Curry, a little cutting pass to Trainer offline. Turned over by Louisville in the half court. Whelan, quick entry pass, tipped it. Skip out for Hope. Tipton on the drive. Fall away over trainer good for Garrett Tipton. He's got 11 on his fifth field goal. Boy, he likes that drive and jump stop and turnaround jumper. Betts is so active on defense. There goes Withers and one. Jalen Withers fouled on the drive. But that, that's a really nice job, attacking in transition. A really good screen by Trainer sets up Withers, and Withers recognizes he has a lane to the basket. And that, I think that's going to be a very important thing for Louisville. You need to recognize when to attack. Yeah, you want to pass the ball. Yeah, you want to get the ball into the lane. All six of Louisville's second half points belong to the redshirt junior Withers. But at some point, you have to attack the basket. And figuring out when to do that is going to be critical. On the drive, and Suter couldn't finish. Slapped out. I think that's the first offensive rebound for Bellarmine tonight. Baseline pass, knocked away. Betts couldn't corral it. Curry's got the loose ball. Louisville in transition. Here's Ellis. Mike James at three. Just like that, it's down to seven, Dan. Well, this is the way Louisville started the game, Wes, making three-point shots. A three-point play by Withers and a three-ball from James. Hope trying to take Curry into the lane. He traveled with it. You see Scott Davenport yell at his big man to pass it. And that's what they want to do. They want to pass the ball. But here, Ellis, look at what he did there, West. He penetrated in transition, drew four players, and then found the open man. That's what they need Ellis to do. Gets himself surrounded by four guys. Somebody's got to be open. And he found the open man. Ellis launches. Front rim miss. Curry controlled the rebound. And a foul will be called, and I think that's on Kurt Holt. 
Third on Hope, second on the Knights here in half two. Well, Curry did a pretty good job, I thought, going straight up for that rebound. And Hope, I think, fouled him on the way down. Curry, Curry, <laughs> he can be, we saw in the last couple of games of last year, he can be a load yep. inside. Withers fakes the three, through traffic on the drive, offensive foul on Jalen Withers. It'll be the third on Withers, it's the second on Louisville here in the second. And Ellis is telling him to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, Wes, he's trying to attack. I understand what he's trying to do, but you sort of have to understand when is the proper time to do it, and that's all part of the learning process. Withers the third, Cardinal with three, and there's a travel on the jump stop by Tipton. They've had some success with those backdoor cuts, but right. that was a really tough pass by Freem. Very hard to handle, and the result was a turnover. You know what, Dan? Here's the other thing, too. Louisville defending at a little higher rate here in the second half as well. But well, Bellerman only had two turnovers in the first half. They well, we already got that many in this half. Kamari lands on the floor. Trainer. Here's Ellis with James and Curry, and that is Trainer. Front rim miss on the three. Again, I, I don't know that that's the shot you nope. want Trainer to take. Tipton will launch. Spin out in the rebound for Ellis. Louisville trying to move it up the floor here with Ellis. Now Lands launches. Bounced out in the rebound for Betts. On the drive. Whelan forced it up, rattled out. That's really good defense by Trainer to just force the difficult shot without foul. Hearts have been pretty quick to the trigger from the perimeter. James again. Air ball. Well, we've been stuck with a seven point margin here for a while. Yep. Langdon Hatton on the floor to replace Hope a moment ago. Betts. On the drive, nice cut. Whelan couldn't finish. Trainer the rebound. And I believe the foul is going to be on. Going to be on Trainer. That'll get us to a timeout. Seven point lead for the Knights of Bellarmine. Back after this. If anybody knows what a naval aircraft carrier is like, it would be the father of a former naval aviator, no, right? No, it, it would be the naval aviator, <laughs> not his old man. <laughs> yep. I suspect Terry will enjoy watching that, don't you think, on the Abraham Lincoln? Guy that used to land the big birds on that deck, right? Yeah, he did. Now, the aircraft carrier that he deployed with was the Carl Vinson, not right. the Abraham Lincoln. The Carl Vinson, by the way, was the aircraft carrier that the whole thing started with Michigan State, Carolina that time. Back in, uh, what, November of 2011, I believe. It's hard to believe that was 11 years ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, Bellerman is uh, bidding for their first ever win tonight against Louisville in their 13th meeting. They played several exhibition games, by the way, when they Knights with D2, and of course they've got a terrific history that dates back to December of 1960. And Bash Whelan at the line after the fourth foul a moment ago on J.J. Trainer got us to the timeout. Now. Well, Louisville's done a much better job defensively. That's only the third point. Or excuse me, the, they've only scored two baskets and now six points in this half. Right. They've got three turnovers. 11 for Whelan. He is 9 for 10 at the line, by the way. You see James with Withers. Kamari Lands calls for the ball and gets it. Working on Whelan. Tried to throw out of a double team and turned over by Louisville. Here is Betts. Into the corner. Freem. Senior from Cincinnati and quickly inside. Hatton had it blocked and he's fouled. Wes, on that particular sequence, Betts had the chance to shoot the ball on two different occasions, passed each one up, and the result now happens is going back to the free throw line. Four on Withers, Dan, with 14.23 to play. 
So you've got four on trainer, four on Withers. Yep. And a two shot try for Langdon Hat from Georgetown, Indiana. He's got six now. You see Withers comes out. And here is Brandon Huntley Hatfield, who started both halves, got an early foul, got in some foul trouble in the first half, came out, and now has come back on the floor after being lifted quickly. Well, he picked up a foul right away. Yep. So two guys are out with four fouls. So you bring in a guy with three. With three. Yep. 11 point lead. It was as close as seven a moment ago. But four straight free throws from Whelan and Hatton have pushed it back to four. James baseline. The scoop and score. Eight for James. Five and a half. Nine point lead for the Knights. Boy, they get the ball from side to side quickly, don't they? Yep, do very well. Here's Hatton. Extra dribble against Wheeler and travel. Dan, he better serve? Just go ahead and take it Absolutely. Off. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, he had the momentum. It takes you just put the ball up to the basket. If Wheeler blocks your shot, well, okay, he blocks your shot. Likely he might get called for a foul, though. See, Louisville's only got five points off the turnovers. Well, in this second half, in particular, Louisville's problems have been on the offensive end. Ellis for James, spot up three. Got it. Mike James, 11 in the game, eight in the second half, and now Louisville to within six. Well, they, they haven't quit, Wes. They've done a really nice job battling back. Really S tighten things up on the defensive end. Suter. Trying to score on James. Forced it up, rolled off, Wheeler the rebound. Ellis. He is so good in transition. All the way with the right hand. Cards to it in four on a dazzling play from L. Ellis. Tipton, fall away. And it rolls in to stop the drought for Bellerman. Scott Davenport takes a timeout. We get a break in the action. Six point game in the Ville. One and a half to go with Dan Bonner, West Durham. We welcome you back to our coverage tonight from the Yum Center. I keep thinking here, Kenny Payne is taking in a whole lot tonight in game one, isn't he? I mean, he's learning, Dan, not every possession, but pretty close, right? Well, he's learning what his guys can do when right. the lights are on and the stands are full. And he's learning what they can do when they're in a pretty tough spot. It's been an entirely different second half from a from a composure standpoint. Not nearly as rushed as it was in the first half at times. And lots of times you get that done on the defensive end. And right. They really tightened it up on the defensive end. So they have had scoring opportunities. They're still very heavily reliant on the three-point shot, but the ball's been going in the basket. Lands plays with James, Huntley Hatfield, Ellis with the ball, and Wheeler, who's done a terrific job around the rim for the Cardinals. Sets a good screen here for Ellis. Lands. Ellis a three. The miss. Wheeler keeps it alive, and the big fella went back for the stick and draws the foul. West They're going to get uh, Tipton for his second and the third on the Knights. When you move the ball, Wes, you force the defense to move. So when you miss a shot, you've got a better opportunity at an offensive rebound. Here's Roosevelt Wheeler. And the first one good, his opening point of the night. Wheeler a year ago averaged about seven minutes a ball game. Shot 63% from the floor, but it was interesting. Kenny Payne said... In the in the fall about Wheeler, his ability to run rim to rim is going to help us. And we just saw him what pop out high at 20 feet for the screen and get to the glass to cover the offensive rebound. Well, with Curry and Withers both with four personal fouls, Wheeler is going to have a lot of opportunity here in this second half. Yep. Played at John Marshall High School in Richmond, had no senior year of basketball by the way because of the COVID pandemic. 
Hit one of the two. He's one for three at the line tonight. It's a five point game. Suter on the reroute. Oh, Johnson my. a catch and shoot. Ben Johnson. Has, he, he was standing on the tail feather of the Cardinals. He's got eight, a pair of threes in tow for the former Mr. Basketball here in the Commonwealth. You simply can't defend that. Pushes the lead quickly back to eight. Looks like Wheeler turned an ankle or something. Lands for Ellis. Back out front, Kamari lands, left it on the front rim. And Johnson will watch it bounce out of bounds into the Louisville bench. Well, Ben Johnson comes in highly decorated, Dan, out of Lexington Catholic. This is what you call a deep three. <laughs> against Crosstown Louisville and Dan Scott Davenport's team with 20 and 13 a year ago and they have signed up to play some folks including <laughs> some ACC folks you see tonight Louisville week or so Clemson then Duke Mick Cronin UCLA waiting in late November as is John Calipari in Kentucky well now, if you saw a schedule like that on the part of a Big Ten school or an ACC school, you would say, well, okay, they're trying to get, position themselves for an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, but that's not happening in the eighth sun. Right. You're just playing the best teams you can find to put your guys in great opportunities. There's Wheeler, that got blocked away from behind by Wheeler, recovered by Huntley Hatfield. Remember, he's on the floor with three. Curry is over on the... Uh, Bench with two and through traffic and the miss there by L. Ellis. So it's still an eight point game under 11 to play. Johnson, who hit the deep three a moment ago with Whelan. This is Suter. 10 to shoot for Whelan. Tried to dump it into Hope and hooked away by Ellis. Eight to shoot for the Knights on a spot throw in from the baseline. Now, Bellarmine has been fortunate twice on this possession. Louisville's nearly come up with two steals. Bets to put it in play. Lob, hope the catch, couldn't finish it. You need to catch that and come down, Wes. You catch it, you come down, you go back up. On the drive, Ellis, back from James. There's a skip for Ellis. Here's Kamari Lands. Ten to shoot. Ellis has got to find a way around. Wheeler does. Feed inside and the dunk from Roosevelt Wheeler. It's a really nice job by L. Ellis. Cards trying to get a stop now. Trailing six. Defensive intensity has really picked up. Yep, sure has. On the drive, Betts the scoop. That'll be goaltending on Wheeler. Justin Betts, just his second field goal, Dan, for guys impacted the game at all 94 feet. What's well, only his fourth field goal attempt? And Ellis, again, he does such a good job after some ball movement of being able to draw defenders and find open men inside. So Sidney Curry's going to check in. Give Wheeler a break. On Curry, Curry cannot worry about the fact that he's got four fouls. Right. He just needs to play hard. That was a huge basket by Betts. So Wheeler over that bench area. Withers on the bench still with the four fouls. And here is the drive from James. Tough shot draws the foul. And that is Freem who picks up his first. James has established that he can do the catch and shoot from three. He's a very good standstill three-point shooter, it appears. 
And because he has established that shot, now people run at him. He's able to take the ball yep. and drive it past. He's, I think he's been very impressive tonight, particularly in the second half. Don't forget ACC PM weekday afternoons, 4 o'clock. You know Pack, Trey Boston, Tyler Tannenbaum. All the football intel plus latest news from around the league weekdays at 4 Eastern on ACC Network and the ESPN app. And the game is back to six points. James has got it both. He's got a 10 point second half. Dan, a 13 point night. Six point game. Need a stop. That's Hatton, the big tall transfer from William and Mary. And here's Betts working against Ellis. Frame returns to Betts, launches with the horn winding air ball, shot clock violation on Louisville. Betts passed up one that he should have taken. And Betts is looking to pass the ball, but sometimes, you know, he had a much better shot that he passed up than what he ended up getting. But again, there's the Louisville defense, Wes. And it has been much, much better in this second half. Totally agree. And here is Ellis now with the cards trailing six. Back into the hands from the senior from Durham. Into traffic, now James. Ellis with five to shoot, lost the handle on it, gets it to Lands. Kamari will step in, floater, spins out, rebound, basket, Huntley Hatfield. Four point game. Shot clock under 10. Whelan fouled on the play by James. His second, five on Louisville. Free throws for Bellarmine's. Bash Whelan will be continued from the young center. Try to make sure that games in November mean just as much as games in February. And as a result, by the time you get the conference play, you're sort of already set in. It's hard to reverse it in conference play if you have a bad non-conference season. Here is Whelan at the line, the first of two. He's 10 of 11 now at the strike. Now, Louisville's defense has been really good. They've held Bellerman to only 38% shooting in the second half. Bellerman, they scored 41 points in the first half, West, but they only have 18 here in the second. And the lead is six. 59 to 53. We go under eight to play. The combination of James and Ellis has been really good here in the second and half. And an unforced error there. James thought Lance would drift toward the corner. He didn't. And a turnover. Well, and that's okay if James thinks that, but you got to keep your feet on the floor. You can't jump up in the air to pass the ball. By the way, that Duke game we showed you a moment ago, we showed the graphic, the tip-off time on ACC Network's at 6.30. Oh, okay. About to say a matinee on a Friday before Thanksgiving, a week out, I was a little... So it's a 6.30 start ahead of Georgia and Wake Forest from winston Salem. And Betts went to the ground and last touched by the Knights. So it will go back to Louisville. Boy, I thought it was possible that Huntley Hatfield got his hand on the ball, yeah. but, he, but he didn't. So and there's another turnover. That is now five turnovers in the second half for Bellman. They only had three in the first half. Or excuse me, only two in the first right. half. Sidney Curry with Lance. That's James. And trainers back in with his four fouls. Yeah, he's got four fouls. Ten to shoot. Lance crosses over on frame and draws the foul. Nice move by the rookie Kamari Lance. And the foul on Alec Freem, his second. That is four or five now on Bellamy. It's five team fouls on the Knights. 
So here is Lands at the line. And the first collegiate point for Kamari Lands. We're pretty high on him, Wes. Yeah. He's a, you know, he's got a very bouncy kind of body and seems to play with a lot of enthusiasm. He played at Hillcrest Prep out in Arizona a year ago, averaged 33 points and 11 rebounds a game. <laughs> I'd say that's bouncy. Four point game with six and a half to go. Feels like we might be going to the wire in meeting number 13 between the two. West cards have been able to cut it to four on a couple of occasions. Here's the slash tipped into the glass and fouled, and that's Trainer's fifth. It'll be a five point night for JJ Trainer, the start of his junior campaign. And he will be disqualified on fouls with 618 to go. It has been very, very difficult for the Knights of Bellarmine to get any kind of open looks at all here in the second half. They've been able to do a pretty good job at the free throw line, but again, the Louisville defense has been very good. Two shots coming for the Knights. And Garrett Tipton, who was a 64% free throw shooter a year ago, to the line here. Now these are big free throws. Sure are with a four point game. His first of the night now has 14 points. Well, another thing that Louisville's done pretty well here in the second half, Bellerman. Pretty good three point shooting team. Louisville's limited them to only four three point attempts in this second half. First free throws of the night, both of them good. So it's a six point lead for Bellman. Here's Curry with Lance. Withers back on the floor here, Dan, too, here in the dead ball a moment ago. Ellis all the way through on the drive, skip out for Lands. He traveled with it. Couldn't decide. It looked like it was deciding between a three or a drive. Well, and it's one of those things where you got to be, you got to play with confidence. Yep. If you're going to drive, drive. I thought that Ellis and drawing the defense like that created a perfect opportunity for a three. And you know, when you have a wide open three and Lance can shoot it, you said he averaged 33 points a game in high school. I think that's a shot you have to be confident enough to take. Here's Tipton trying to beat Lands on the baseline and does off the glass. Again, Tipton is really good close to the basket. Yep, got eight and a half, 17 in the ball game. Garrett Tipton and Bash Whelan. It's a career high for Tipton. Three ball rattled out from Ellis, and it's back to an eight point game and inside five and a half. And that's not a good shot, not just because he missed, but because there was no ball movement. They had no chance to get that rebound. Tipton slashing through again, fall away, oh, and my. it rattles in. 19 now for Tipton. The lead is 10, and a timeout for Louisville. We'll step aside at the Young Center. The Knights bid for the upset continues. Night, Dan. Well, he's he's had a 6-0 run all on his own here in the last couple of minutes. But he's made threes. He's driven the ball to the basket. His mid-range game has been really good. The turnaround jumpers, the fallaways. He has been very difficult to defend. And as I say, it was a four-point game, and he has scored the last six points. So a 6-0 Garrett Tipton run is what has turned the tables here, turned the tie here for the moment for the Bell the night. Well, and here's the other part. Garrett Tipton's a guy who a year ago averaged 15 minutes a game and five points for Scott Davenport because Dylan Penn and C.J. Fleming, who are no longer here, Penn transferred to Vermont. Apparently, he's preseason all-conference in the America <laughs> East. C.J. Fleming, you see, they were combining for 32 points a game. And there's a turnover by Louisville Withers trying to feed the backdoor cut. And Kenny Payne is standing over on the sideline. And he had his... He Covered his face with his hand. Yep. Ellis wasn't looking for the ball and he was alone. Yep. 
On the drive. Oh, tough shot and a score for Garrett Tipton. So that's eight points in a row for Tipton. Sure is. And he's got 21 in the ball game, by the way. 67 to 55. Ellis standing three. Follow shot good. Huntley Hatfield, his third field goal. He's got seven. Well, that's an important basket, and Louisville has battled back a couple of times. You got to dig in now on the defensive end. Both schools, you see, with the two timeouts to go. Suter. Kick out. And the long three off the hand of Hof is no good. And a foul ticketed to Whelan. So a timeout at the Yum Center. Ten point game when we come back. Division two to division one. The NCAA has a four year reclassification transition process, which is just silly. Yep. You know, there may have been a time when it was appropriate, but that's another archaic rule. Yep. Louisville down 10. And here is Huntley Hatfield in his Cardinal debut tonight. Withers had that one spin out and the rebound taken away by Betts. Boy, I cannot tell you how good Justin Betts has been tonight, Dan, for a guy who's only posted five points on two field goals. He's done about everything you can ask a guy to do. His defense has been outstanding. Hoth. They swing it around, and this is Whelan on the attack. Skip back for Betts. Three to shoot. Fall away. Deep two and the rebound for Louisville. Well, that shooting the ball is not the best part of Betts' game. Huntley Hatfield burrowing down and got the roll with the right hand. Really nice job to force the switch out at the top. And then Huntley Hatfield at 6'10. Betts is only 6'3. And I don't care how good a defender you are. Yeah. 6'10 gets you inside. It's really going to be tough. Nine for Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Now you need stops now, Wes. Well, you got timeouts. You can get the clock stopped, but you definitely do need the stops defensively. Tipton's been sensational in the second half for the Knights, and there's another fall away. Kept alive by James, and last touch by the Knights, says Tommy Morrissey. So it's an eight point game. Substitutions now. Alec Freem has checked in. And he will replace Peter Suter for Scott Davenport's club. You know, Wes, I thought Suter could have grabbed that ball, but he thought that James had touched it last. And in that situation, if you can grab it, grab it. Don't rely on the official to give you the ball. Screen by Wheeler. Here goes Withers to the basket and fouled, and that'll be Wheeler. So Jalen Withers will have to earn it at the line. Seventh foul on Bellerman with 2.07 to go. You know, you got to be impressed with the optimism of Wheeler thinking he can block Wheeler's shot. Yeah. And he's going to make him go to the line. Three for three tonight. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. And the first one good. Okay, here they go, Wes. They're climbing right back in it again. There's plenty of time left in the game. 14 for Jalen Withers. Who averaged six and four against the league a season ago in 17 minutes. But as Dan told you, he was as good as he and Curry were really the spark and a tough finish and almost stolen by Ellis. And he did knock it off of Betts. Terrific play by L. Ellis on the ball against Justin Betts with two minutes even to go. They're going to look at this, I believe. Bert Smith is headed to the monitor at the scores table across the way. Well, two minutes, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> right on the number, by the way, Dan. Well, Six-point game. You know, we're, we're all the way across the court, but I wasn't sure. I thought it possibly was off Ellis. So Tommy Morrissey and Bert Smith having a look. See what you can glean from this. 
Well, that's hard to tell. Call on the floor matters here. That looks to me like Ellis was the last guy to touch it, but I'm not sure. I, if they can find a definitive angle. The world famous indisputable video evidence, Mr. Bonner. Yep, there you go. And as you say, Wes, the key is the call on the floor was Louisville ball. Right. Did the ball change direction? Let's see. Oh, wow, look at the zoom shot. Boy, it's hard to tell from that. Well, and again, if it's hard to tell, Ball. So they determined, Dan, that the video you and I were looking at. Well, now, keep in mind, well, Lance, they, they have an entirely separate system over there. Right. They have more, they, in this particular case, they have more angles than we do. Yeah. So we're sorry we couldn't show you a definitive angle, but they, they obviously saw one. So Bellerman's ball. Well, and then they had to get the shot clock straight, so. That's it. And timeout, timeout was called before the ball was put in play? Yes. So there still should be two minutes left then, right? So. Well, unless they call the timeout once he caught the ball. Once he caught the ball? Okay. That may be it then. Very good. Well, I think that they didn't like the way the defense was set up. You remember that Ellis very nearly stole the ball from Beth. So it was a timeout, though, for Bellerman. Leaves yes. them with one. Louisville has two. And, Wes, I think that Bert Smith is over there talking with the timer about whether or not that was the timeout was called once the ball was touched in back. Right. And that's the way it's going to stand. So the timeout was not called with the ball out of bounds. The timeout was called once the ball was touched there you inbound. Go. So 159 to play. Here's Frame, front court bets. Boy, that was a dangerous pass. Yep. Wheeling on the drive. Hope a three. And the rebound for Withers. Now to Ellis with 145 to play. It's a six-point game. I'm not sure that's the guy they wanted to shoot that ball. And last touch by Bellerman going across the baseline. Huntley Hatfield. Ellis threaded the needle to Huntley Hatfield. Well, they're lucky to keep that ball. Yeah. They? So baseline for L. Ellis. They're trying to get the uh, uniform all set up. <laughs> well, you got to look good in this last minute 39. Inbounds for Withers. On the drive, Jalen Withers the layup. Well, Wes, here they are back to four again. How yep. many times have we seen this? 8-0 run by the Cards to draw to within four. Ellis against Tipton. Here's Tipton on the drive. 
into traffic. Skip out for Betts with eight to shoot. Travel. And he traveled. Bellerman, who only had two turnovers in the first half, has six here in the second half, Dan, and another timeout. This one taken by Kenny Payne. Four-point game, 72 seconds left. Common fouls are one and one. And each school with a timeout to go. Well, and possession to the Knights, by the way. But there's plenty of time left in the game. Right. You know, if you're Louisville, you don't want to run 30 seconds off the clock looking for a shot, but you have time to move the ball and get a good one. You don't have to take a bad shot. And then you, you, you still have time to play really good defense. They've been forcing turnovers. If you make the shot, there's no reason to foul. You right. just play good defense. So Huntley Hatfield will put it in play. Ellis stays in the backcourt. And Louisville's had success recently. West driving the ball to the basket. And here is Ellis. You don't want to settle for anything here. Trying to take Betts down to the post. Huntley Hatfield around for James's three. Big shot by Mike James. Now Cards you just do it in one. Now you just guard West. Frame almost had it stolen. Withers does force the turnover. Here's Ellis now on the drive and foul. <laughs> foul on Tipton, his third. Well, Ellis can create such problems when he gets down low like that. Draws the defense, they can't get back to James. That's James' third three-point basket of the game. How about this, Wes? One that free throw, one and one for L. Ellis. Louisville's not led since it was 15-14. At the 12-19 mark of the first half. Free throw no good. 40 seconds left, and there's a backcourt foul on Withers. Jalen Withers has just fouled out of the ball game. And that, that's the worst aspect about that particular foul, Wes. Tipton's going to the line, and he's been really good tonight, two for two from the line. You know, big game, 21 points overall, but you mentioned he's only a 64% career free throw shooter. Right. And it is a one-on-one. -one. Meanwhile, Kenny Payne, who talked about building confidence with this team so they could play freely, not live and die on half-court possessions or moments, has to be talking to his team about that right now when Ellis had a chance to give him the lead and missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. So here is Tipton, who's had a 12-point second half and a 21-point career night. And missed the free throw, but Hope got the rebound. 19-second differential shot clock, game clock. On the drive, Tipton had it blocked, and he caught it, but stepped out of bounds. It goes to Louisville. Cards had a guy at the free throw line. They missed a chance on a box out and still got the ball down one. And Kenny Payne uses his last time out. This is a really good defensive play by Huntley Hatfield. And, you know, Tipton, if he just lets it go, it's Bellerman's ball. Yeah. But Wes, in this situation, with 27.3 seconds left, down one. Louisville doesn't really want to hold the ball for the last shot. You go and you get the first good shot that you can that you can get, so you give yourself some time in case you miss. Well, and here's the other trick about this. Yes. 
They've been much better defensively in the second half, Dan. If you get the basket, take the first open shot because you got a chance to get a stop at the end, right? Well, you want to take a good shot, Wes. Yeah. You, you don't want to force anything, but they have been very successful getting the ball into the lane, either with the drive, mostly with the drive, but sometimes with the pass, forcing the defense to collapse and kicking the ball out. Now, they haven't shot a great percentage the entire second half, but they've done a much better job with that on the offensive end. But their defense has been the key here in the second half. So Bellerman brings back Hope, Suter, Frame, Tipton, and Justin Betts. Louisville has Huntley Hatfield, Roosevelt Wheeler, Kamari Lance, Mike James, and L. Ellis. Somebody's got to go help Brandon Huntley Hatfield with the inbounds. And Betts is going to follow Ellis. Well, now, if you're Bellman, you have to play good defense. You don't want to put anybody on the line. Yep. 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Louisville has not led since 15-14. Ellis on the drive with Betts and bounced oh, it, it off it, it, it of it, it, but did it hit Ellis? Tommy Morris, he says it belongs to Louisville. 9.8 to go. And the cards are going to go flat here on the inbounds. And, and the players are saying the ball hit Ellis when Ellis was out of bounds. Let's see. Well, you can't see it from there, but if the ball hit, I thought the ball hit Ellis in the foot. Okay. And if the ball hit Ellis in the foot, the ball is out of bounds when it touches something out of bounds. And if the first thing it touched out of bounds was Ellis, then it's Bellman's ball. Right. So this is the second one of these out-of-bounds things that we've had here in the last two minutes. Yep. But I really thought the first thing that ball touched out-of-bounds was L. Ellis. Was L. Right. You know, even if it bounced off Ben. That, that looks like, that to me, that looks like the ball hit Ellis in the foot because it bounces in a different direction. It doesn't well, bounce straight up in the air. Justin Betts sure thought so. Right. Well, of course, Justin Betts is not the most objective observer in this particular situation. Okay. So 10 seconds, and the ball will belong to Louisville. We watch the cards so they go through an array of baseline out-of-bounds plays, Dan. Well, let's see how well they paid attention. Yep. Ellis, the spot throw in. This is Lance. Jump shot for the lead. Wheeler, the rebound. The stick back won't go. Betts, the rebound. He throws the ball down the floor with three seconds left. It goes out-of-bounds with a half-second left. And it will go back to the spot where the ball left his hand, will it not? No. Goes to the end line. They got to go the length of the floor then? Yes. Okay. That only happens when you throw the ball throw from the ball. out of Thank bounds. You. He was inbounds and he threw the ball. This is an interesting kind of thing that he just did. Now, the ball is out of bounds. The clock stops when it touches out of bounds. And that looks like one second. So they're checking on the time. Well... The clock stops when the ball is out of bounds. And again, the ball is out of bounds when it hits something out of bounds. The fact that it's that it's in the air over the out of bounds line doesn't matter. That's probably the right call right there. Point nine though, Dan. Well, point nine, you have the opportunity to throw it in bounds, catch it, and shoot it. Right. Bellerman trying to beat Louisville for the first time ever. Post their first win against a Power 5 team since going Division 1. Huntley Hatfield to put it in play. Ellis will catch, turn, lift, and Bellerman wins. Scott Davenport's Knights. Didn't get a chance in postseason a year ago, Dan. A disappointing 
set of events for the Knights, but tonight they start the new campaign with arguably their biggest win in program history. Well, I would say their biggest win in Division One history. <laughs> but, I, you know...